Pierre Maguire of NBC Sports. Pierre, does the cup get its own seat on a plane? Or is it a go? I don't, a, is it going a bit above? Know. Yeah, I don't know, Rich. I don't know the answer to that except to say I've slept with the cup twice. Once oh. in 91 and once in 92. It's a pretty amazing thing uh, to be around. And uh, you see the history and the names. It's one of the most unique trophies in all of sport, perhaps the most unique trophy in all of sport, but uh, it really tells the history of the league. Now, Pierre, did you? does that mean you spooned the cup? Oh, yeah, saying? absolutely. Absolutely, Rich. Hmm. I need more information, Pierre, i got to say. i got to be honest with you. <laughs> What happened? <laughs> well, it was a delightful evening. We won in 91 in Minnesota mm -hmm. and on the road, and we won in 92 in Chicago, and both times um, had a chance to spend the evening with the Cubs, so it was good. Yeah. <laughs> now, it's interesting because Chicago has spent evenings with the Cup, but the city of Chicago hasn't since 1938. What do you think that atmosphere is going to be like tonight uh, for, well, for, for this game? It's always electric, obviously, in the United Center, but especially when you have a chance in a Stanley Cup final to close a team out, which the Blackhawks have put themselves in this amazing position. Um, so it'll be electrified right from the anthem going forward. I have to think that Tampa's going to have to weather a pretty ferocious start, Rich, early on. Um, so it's going to come down to total team uh, concentration and effort and really composure level for Tampa. If they're not able to hold it together, then potentially we're done. If they're able to hold it together, then the t uh, team that's been pushing usually gets a little bit mentally and physically fatigued, and the crowd starts to wane a little bit, and there becomes some trepidation in the building. Mm -hmm. So it's really important if you're Chicago when you get off to a good start, if you do, that you, you're able to maintain. And if you're Tampa, just weather the storm, and then eventually uh, it'll tide will start to turn your way. But it just seems to me, Pierre, the team that's been weathering ferocity more than most is Chicago. That it seems that Tampa has been controlling a lot of the action in this series. And Chicago just, whenever it does have an opportunity, cashes in more than most. Is that the way you're seeing it, Pierre? Uh, up until Game 5, Rich, I would agree with you. I thought the start for Chicago in Game 5 was their best start of the series. Really thought they played a smart road game uh, to begin, and then eventually uh, were able to weather a little bit of a Tampa storm uh, after Valtteri Filippo scored to tie the game, and then obviously they get the, the break and the Versteeg play and the, and the great goal by Vermette. But I would agree with you through the first four games, I think you bang on. The thing that's different about the Chicago team, though, Rich, they are professional winners. They know how to close the deal. They used to have a guy in Chicago that used to be able to do that in basketball, too, Yes, Michael Jordan. And these guys are just like that. I'm telling you. Now, it's not one individual. It's just the team that's just like that. These guys are just professional winners. They really are. Yeah, Jordan uh, Jordan statue will be the one with the Blackhawks jersey on it in front of the United Center tonight when they play that game uh, against the Maple Leafs. So uh, do we expect to see Ben Bishop out there tonight? You think? I would be surprised if Ben Bishop did not play uh, based on everything that took place in Game 5 and the fact that he had a couple extra days rest. Uh, after game four, going into game five, he looked, you know, a little bit more fluid in game five, even though he had the major catastrophe with Victor Hedman, which yeah. led to the Patrick Sharp goal. Outside of that, I mean, I thought he played relatively well. In fact, I thought he played very well. So I, I would be shocked if Ben Bishop didn't play. Tonight. What has been going on with him, Pierre? What can you tell me? Uh, if I were, if I were going to bet just from the years I've been around it, it's either a hip flexor or a groin. Um, and he's definitely having problems moving side to side. But again, you have to remember he's six foot eight, and he yeah. likes to play a butterfly style. He drops down a lot. There's a lot of moving parts and a lot of heavy parts to move when you're dropping as much as he's been dropping. Yeah, his hip, his hip flexors like many other people's quads, Pierre. I mean, he's a big, huge dude. <laughs> he's a huge man. He really. Is. I know. And so, um, you know, how does one take advantage of that? A lot of side-to-side -side play, uh, a lot of wraparound opportunities, a lot of cycling behind the net, get him to have to move from pole to pole. Uh, when you're coming down the wing, don't just bury your head uh, and shoot the puck. Keep your head up, maybe pump fake, get him to have to move one way or the other. Either you take the puck wide or you pass it cross ice to a waiting winger or a center iceman. So there are a lot of ways you can do it. But one of the things that Chicago does very well they cycle the puck below the goal line extremely well, and they really cycle the puck behind the net very well, and that can be problematic for a goalie that's got a lower body injury. And, I mean, it's only the second time in Stanley Cup history the first five games have been decided by one goal, so it's rare to see that. It, the thing that blows me away, Pierre, I'm talking to Pierre Maguire of NBC Sports, who's going to be part of tonight's coverage uh, on NBC at 8 p.m. Eastern time, uh, that not even a team, there's been no two-goal lead, period, at all, at any point 
in this Stanley Cup final. Why is that, Pierre? Rich, very similar type teams that play very similar type styles. Uh, and what you've seen is one star shut down defenseman, Victor Hedman, really being able to do a good job in terms of shutting down Patrick Kane. And on the other side of things, you've seen Steven Stamkos go goalless in this round. And a big reason why is because of Duncan Keith of the Chicago Blackhawks. So you've got equal type teams playing similar type styles with both of them having elite shutdown defensemen on the perfect side. Kane is a right winger who plays against a left defenseman in, in Victor Hedman. Stamkos is a right winger right now, sometimes a center, but mostly a right winger, playing against the elite left defenseman in Duncan Keith. So when you put it all together, yeah, there are a lot of permutations and moving parts, Rich, but i got to tell you, they're just so sim- uh, the teams are so similar that uh, this is why we've had these really, really tight games. Call your shot for tonight, Pierre, and I know you don't predict, so I, won't, I don't mean sure. it when I say that by that. Yep. The, the player on each team to look for tonight. Well, you know, for John, for Chicago, Jonathan Taze, I've seen him elevate so many different times, whether it's the 2010 Olympics and the gold medal game against the Americans, uh, whether it's the 2014 Olympics, the entire time for Canada, the 07 World Junior in Lexan, Sweden for Canada, um, the 2010, the 2013, and the 20, now obviously the 2015 playoffs, especially game six and seven against Anaheim. I think Jonathan Taze for Chicago, his winning pedigree is just off the charts, Goodrich. In terms of Tampa, if they're going to win this game, I think Victor Hedman's going to have to be unbelievably huge, both defensively and offensively. I know everybody says Stamkos has to score. They're probably right on that. But one of the ways Stamkos can get some goals is if Victor Hedman gets more involved in the offense. And another way for me to sort of uh, get you to predict without asking you to predict, our our poll question today asks which team currently down 3-2 in a final or finals with the NBA has a better chance of coming out of the hole and winning it all. The Cavs, <laughs> Cavs or the Lightning? How how would you how would you vote on that poll question? You are yeah. such a slickster. I love it, Rich. That's, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, well, I don't know much about basketball except I did watch the game last night. And I thought Steph Curry was phenomenal. Um, so I'll, I'll stick with the sport that I know. Okay. Uh, how about if I do it this way? Sure. Tampa better be really good at the start if they're going to force a game seven. And if they're not, then we will not be playing hockey past. Tonight. Okay, I like it, Pierre. And the next time uh, we chat, can you find out for me if the cup has its own seat on an airplane? Can you find that out for me? Just take. I a... can find that. I can find that out tonight, and I look forward to chatting with you again. I look. I'll be too. bugging you about your sport. I'll be bugging you about football. You know it. I'm there for you. You've been there for me, so that's the way it works. Thank you. Appreciate it. You're very welcome, my friend. Take care. Have a good one. That's Pierre McGuire, NBC Sports, here on the Rich Eisen Show. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On audience.